Welcome back AFL Fantasy Freak fam. If you're new around here, I'm Jacob aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. If you like AFL Fantasy content, make sure to smash the subscribe button. In this one guys, I'm going to be covering round 5 trade talk, all the issues such as what to do with your rucks this week, what to do with Caleb Daniel, I'm going to be going over all the players you need to get out this week and all the guys you should be looking to target. Enjoy the video. We're starting to see a lot of these rookies drop off and a lot of our bench guys are starting not to play. So I think it's a priority to try and fix some of that up this week. And these are the guys I'm looking to target. So my number one rookie prospect is Lockie Jones from Port Adelaide. He comes in at 261K, which is a little bit pricey, but he has great scoring ability. He scored 68 on the weekend, but that was off the back of having laid no tackles. So I think there's upside there as well. He looked very aggressive. He looked to lay body. And the fact that he had zero tackles was a little bit surprising. I think we can see that number to increase going forward. And I think that the injuries to Butters, along with Dersma, has taken away some of Port Adelaide's flexibility, and therefore I think Jones's spot in the side may be a little bit more consolidated. I think he's definitely one you should be taking the punt on and getting on board this week if you can. My next best option is just jumping straight on Finlay McRae. He's got ball winning ability. Whilst it is his first game and his break even's a little bit higher, he's one that you can count on to score well. If you need a rookie field option, I think he's safe to have on the field. He should be in the side long term. He's coming in to play a midfield role, you would think. So I had no problems jumping on him early on his first game. As for my third option, this is a bloke that I had in my trade out targets a few weeks ago. But the circumstances have changed now and therefore I think he's a viable option. And that's Miles Bergman, if he gets named this week. So I'm expecting Miles to come back in the side for Dersma or Butters, one of those. And Port Adelaide coaching staff have indicated that whoever opts to come in to fill those guys' role will potentially be in the side for an extended period. So I think this will be Bergman. He's got a super low break even compared to a lot of guys. And I think his job security could actually be decent if he is the bloke that gets that spot in the side. So he's definitely one to look out. If you've already got him in your side, I'd be holding on to him. And if you don't, I think he's my third best option to get this week. As for my fourth option, we have Will Kelly from Collingwood. So he's just over basement price. His role in the side won't be that great in him being a lead up half key forward type of player, but his job security will be fantastic as he's exactly what Collingwood need right now. He's one that I wouldn't have on the field, but you can expect him to play week in, week out, and therefore he's worth just jumping on while he's at his cheapest. I'm not sure if he gets named this week, so he might be one just to keep on the radar and watch out for, but I think he gets a game very soon. So whether you jump on him straight up or wait a week, that's up to you. But I think he's definitely an option you should be looking at. My fifth and final rookie option is Heath Chapman. I usually never recommend jumping on rookies once they pass that 300k point. This year, cash generation looks to be harder than in previous years. We don't have as many quality rookies coming through. And the ones that are coming through don't seem to have great job security. So I think that with Chapman, while he is pretty expensive, his job security is fantastic and his scoring ability looks to be there as well. So he should be able to consistently score 60 plus and I can see him being in the side for a very long period of time. 
He sits at number five because of his price tag. I would be looking at other options such as Lockie Jones ahead of him, but he's probably right on the price cusp and you could potentially still look at him as an option, although I think there are better options. There obviously are plenty of other rookies out there, but I can't go over all of them in this video. I'll link a trade article where I discuss more of these players in detail if you're interested in my perspective on some of these other rookies. These are just my top five and the ones that I think are the best options to bring in this week. At this point in the season, I think that you should really be looking to try and upgrade your players to players that you think are a top in their position. So I think chasing mid prices isn't as viable, but there's certainly some options that present as good value picks. My first one is probably Callum Ward. With Canelio and DeBoer going out injured, it was obvious GWS were going to have to make some changes to their engine room, and one of those was Callum Ward going in there as a full-time inside mid. He was arguably their best player on the weekend, and his CBA usage skied to 88%, which resulted in him having 37 disposals and also racking up 121 points. He currently comes in priced at 70 and we've seen in the past, when he's been fit, he's been able to average 90 to 100 with ease. So there's at least 20 points upside if he's to continue in this role, which I think he will. And therefore, I think he's a fantastic pick as a mid-price option. My second pick is CJ from the Hawks. This man loves an intercept mark. Usually these types of players I avoid as they can be inconsistent but he looks to have other elements to his game. He looks to aggressively spread when his team has the ball in defense and present as an outlet option as well. They try and get the ball in his hands and he just looks like a kid with a stack of ability. So we've seen enough now to know where he's at, to know what his output's gonna be. And at 501K, there's still upside there. There's still money to be made. And so I think he's another genuine mid-price option. The third guy we have is Lockie Ash. Went absolutely huge on the weekend with 122. He looked to play a slightly different role. He's been playing up on the wing for most of the season, but we saw him drop back to half back a bit more this week. And as a result, he mopped up a lot of kicks, a lot of marks, his ability to get into space and demand the footy was really exciting to see from a fantasy standpoint. If you're a coming owner, it's a slight concern as he did look to take some of his kick-ins and also a lot of his ball that he would usually mop up around the back 50. I think Ash going forward can maintain a pretty high average and so I think he's a great mid-price option as well. This brings me on to Isaac Cumming. Out of those, Isaac's the third mid-price defense option. I would probably have him ranked third behind the two guys I just mentioned as well. He has the highest break even, and as a money grab, he's probably going to generate you the least amount of cash. I also think that if Ash is to stay down at halfback, it could sort of hinder Cumming's ability slightly. So I think from a scoring output and a money output, I think he's probably third in the pecking order there. My last mid-price option is a pretty unique guy. He has a huge ceiling. We've seen it in previous years. He can go 140, 150. When he's allowed to free roam and rack up the pill at his own will, this is Aaron Hall. So Aaron's... Since his sub-affected score of 11, he scored 99 and 123, I believe. In this time, he's seen a pretty fantasy-friendly role, which has seen him drift up to the wing and mop up a lot at half-back. He's taking the kick-ins in what looks to be a now 50-50 split with Zebel. And if this fantasy role is to continue, there's no reason why Hall couldn't potentially be a top six forward. I think he's potentially worth the punt 
At this stage, the forwards look to be unsettled. Unlike the midfielders, the rucks and the defenders, where we have a pretty clear idea of who the top guys are, it's pretty unclear who the top forwards are going to be at this stage. So I think that taking a risk on a guy like this in the forward line is definitely viable. And if you're looking for a mid-price forward option, I think Aaron Hall could be a sneaky, unique pick, although it does come with a lot of risk. North Melbourne are throwing the magnets around. We saw Kane Turner go into the middle last week. Their team's very unsettled. They're going to try different things, and so his role could be volatile in the future, which is just something to consider. But as it stands right now, I think he's a fantastic option. If we jump into my premium options, I think these guys here are really important, and I will touch on some different trade outcomes and possibilities after this segment. But I think getting either Grundy or Gorn, if you don't have one of those two guys, is your top priority this week. It's looking like GWS could potentially play Mumford again. With Rory Lobb around the corner, I don't think Meek will get a game. Hunter's not going to come back into the side, you wouldn't think. So a lot of coaches could be left with a donut in their ruck this week if they don't pick up another replacement. If you're going for a ruck option, it's clear cut who the best guys are. and You need to be getting to a Gorn or a Grundy if you can. My second best premium option is Riley O'Brien. He's dropped 147k from his starting price, which leaves him priced at 93. He's clearly the third best ruck. He averaged 108 last year, so he's well down on that. Now's the time to pick him up, and especially if you can't get to Gorn or Grundy, he's the guy that you would want to target. I think getting a ruck this week, if you have Flynn at F2, is a must going forward for stability. Flynn's job security isn't as strong as what I thought it would be, and therefore you can't be relying on him on your field at this point. My third premium option is Jordan Ridley. Ridley is having a fantastic season. He's mopping up heaps across half-back. They use him for the switch all the time. He's got great interceptability, and he's getting 20 to 30 points for free just from the kick-ins each game, as he is the number one kick-in taker, and he does take in a very high percentage of their kick-ins. He's currently priced at 101, but at this rate, I can see him averaging 105 to 110. So he's only going to climb in price from this point, And therefore, I think you can jump on board now if you're looking for a premium defense option. The next premium is Tom Mitchell. He's only at 11% ownership and he's priced at 106. We've seen Mitchell average 120 plus in the past. He looked back to his best on the weekend, and although he copped a tag from Brayshaw, he still managed 120, and before that was on track for 150. I think now he's as cheap as he's going to get. There's upside there, and he's pretty low ownership, so getting on board now is going to give you that edge on the rest of the competition, as they'll be looking to get him in later. The last premium option I have is Adam Trelaw. He comes in priced at 98 after a poor start to the season, but his role's clearly changed. With fitness, he looks to have gone more on ball. I expect this to continue. He's getting used to the Bulldog system. He's been 110 on multiple occasions in the past. He's definitely value, and at the price, you should be looking at him as a premium option to bring in this week. If we take a look at which guys you should be looking to trade out, I think your number one priority has to just be focus on guys that aren't playing. So whether that be Rory Sloan, Caleb Daniel, potentially a Hayden Young if you couldn't get rid of him last week. These types of guys need to go. They should be your number one priority. And I'd be looking to target someone that I've mentioned in the earlier part of the video. From there, your second priority should be fixing up rookies. A lot of teams are accumulating a lot of rookies on the bench that aren't playing. Whilst this isn't a super big concern now, it will be in a month's time, and therefore trying to tackle it head-on now is probably the best solution to preventing that problem in the future. 
I'd be looking to move on guys like Hunter, Highmore, Sharp. These types of rookies, they don't look like they're coming back. And it's best to just jump off now and jump onto one of the guys that I mentioned earlier in the video. If you're a Caleb Daniel owner and you have Flynn at F2, your number one priority this week has to be to fix your ruck. At all costs, you should be putting that money on top of Daniel to get to Gorn or Grundy or go to O'Brien. You have to fix your ruck this week, guys. There's no other way around it. Even if Flynn plays this week, he might not next week, and then it's going to be an issue then. So get that fixed now. You don't want to be relying on these rookie rucks from this point forward. If you've got Caleb Daniel or another non-playing player like Sloan, but you already have a Gorn Grundy O'Brien combo, I think then you have plenty of options. You can either go to a premium, which I suggest, or you could go to one of the mid prices I mentioned as well. It's up to you in what you want to do with your team going forward, what move allows you to tackle the trades that you look to plan for the upcoming rounds. If your team's in a healthy position and a lot of these issues you don't have, then I think this is the perfect week to do a double downgrade. You want to be getting these non-playing rookies off your bench to guys that will play and will generate cash. This week's a perfect opportunity for that if you're in this situation. I also think that if you're in this position, you can then look to luxury trade some of these failed mid prices. So I'd be looking to move on guys like Jordan Clark, Orazio Fantasia, Jordan Degoe, Paddy Dow. These failed mid prices, they don't look to be going anywhere in price and potentially could be going down in price. So if you have that luxury, I'd be getting these guys out of your side as soon as possible. These are my opinions on what you should be looking to do with your trades this week, guys. I just want to quickly reiterate that your number one priority this week should be fixing your ruck. You need to have a solid ruck option at R2 and you can't be relying on Flynn. So if you have Flynn at R2, your priority this week should be getting him off the field as of now. This takes me straight into what I'm looking to do. And like I just stated, I will be doing exactly this. These are my trades this week. I'll be going Meek to McRae, most likely. And then I'll be going Caleb Daniel to Riley O'Brien. If I had the funds, I would be going straight to Gorn, but that's not possible for me this week. So I'll be settling for what I think is the next best option. I can't get Lockie Jones this week as I don't have enough cash, but... As I stated earlier, Finlay McRae is a fantastic option, so I'll be jumping straight on him. His scoring should be great. He's good enough to go on the field this week for me, which I'm looking for, and his cash generation going forward should be fantastic. So I'll be looking to do some trades along those lines. There you have it, guys. That's my round five trade talk news. Everything you should be looking at doing with your fantasy side this week. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, drop a comment below if you have any questions about your side. If you enjoyed the video, smash the subscribe button for more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace, I'm so after school special. She